Say hey. Hey. We're going to read the story, Lassie Come Home, by Rosemary Wells and Susan Jeffries. Let's see. Not sure how long it is, so we might only read half. And then we'll do another video and read the other half. Mm -hmm. That's just like a map or something. Lassie, come home. <coughs> Ooh, that's a long story. Yeah. Part one. She was sable, black, and snow white. Her amber eyes lit up the face of anyone who looked into them. All oh, the village of Greenall Bridge, said Lassie, was the best collie they'd ever seen. One May morning, without telling anyone, Joe's father sold Lassie for 15 pounds. 10 shillings. He sold her because he'd lost his job for good. This was more than three weeks wages. So would he, so would he tell his son Joe? What would Joe do when he found out, when he found Lassie was not waiting for him as she always did after school? When Joe saw the grassy corner of the schoolyard empty that afternoon at four, a panic rose in the back of his mouth. Greenall Bridge was a quiet village and Joe knew perfectly <coughs> well Lassie had never, never been run over or stolen. Before he even ran to ask his mother what had happened, a corner of his heart darkened. Show them the picture. Okay. I think I hear thunder outside. Okay. He dashed home. Clattering into the kitchen, he shouted, Mother, something's happened to Lassie. Where is she? She wasn't at school. Joe's mother said, She's sold. That's what. And there isn't any good you trying to change it. Sold, Joe said. Sold, repeated his mother. Come sit down for your tea, Joe. But how could you sell her? How could anyone? <coughs> Joe's voice rose like a child's as words of any sense fell <coughs> away from him. <coughs> <coughs> Joe's father, usually quiet, knocked over his chair and stormed out of the door. He had not, of course, found a way to tell his son. Joe sat. His tea and bread might as well have been twigs and leaves. Eat, Joe, his mother urged. After a time, his mother spoke of closing the mine where his father worked. She reminded him that they could just pay the rent this month and did not have much left over for more than a little bread <coughs> with no jam and tea with no milk. All of the time she talked, she scrubbed and polished. Joe listened to her talk of the hard times. Her words circled in the way of a Yorkshire villagers. People of that time and place seldom spoke of the hurt and love they felt most deeply. This is a really long one. The kitchen was the center of greatest comfort in Joe's life. Now a twilight had been moved in. I want twilight. Lassie was as good as dead. Her spot on the hearth empty, her brush on the mantle unused. Joe could not eat to please his mother because his throat was as closed as a fist. <laughs> Upstairs in bed, Joe tried to make things better in his mind by going over his mother's words. Hundreds of miners 
fathers losing their jobs, no money for rent, no money for new shoes, no jobs meant a man's weak lungs were treated with homemade steam tents instead of expensive medicines. Women were picking the very weeds from the sheep's pastures to boil for soups, not to mention men talking to themselves in broad daylight. Joe's father came home long after dark. He should have been brushing Lassie now, as he did every night in front of the fire. A hundred scars crisscrossed Joe's father's hand from hacking coal out of a pit six days a week. But in the evenings, the same rough hands swarm over the collied coat like a mother's hands on a baby and fluffed it as silky as a swan. All right, one more page and then we're going to stop. Joe's father coughed. <coughs> Coal miners breathed in black dust all day and hacked most of the night. Down in the mines, coal dust hung in every lung full of air and wept in underground rivers. Down the walls of the mine tunnels, coal stayed part of the men seven days a week, no matter if they scrubbed their hands red raw for Sunday church. Yorkshire granddad slept sitting up straight and sticks in bed. None could breathe lying down after a life in the pits. Last page. Okay. Children were taught not to whine or cry. And mostly they didn't once they'd pass the age of a lost penny sweets. Joe listened for some change of mind from downstairs and cried quietly. He swallowed all sounds of tears because he was ashamed. Lassie would jo was Joe's bright light in a strict gray world. Lassie was the true mate he could talk to in a time when no one said what they really felt, only what they ought to feel. Lassie was Joe's laughter before he would have to grow up and follow his father into the pits. Joe stood at his window and prayed to God to return his collie, knowing all the while God was not about to cross his parents' will. Lassie herself was three miles away in a kennel with 30 other dogs. She did not know that her new owner, the Duke of Redlings, had been trying to pry her and buy her from Joe's father for three years. She longed only to be with the family she loved and out of the iron fence that imprisoned her. Her spirits heavy, she lay still at night. She was sad, Sessa. All right, we'll finish in the next video, part two, coming up.